So let me start from the beginning as to how I would go about creating a conceptual mass model with a box shape and uh, using meters as my main unit, my uh, unit for drafting. So if I say create a new conceptual mass model, I've actually got in a folder the metric mass model template and I can open it up. I just want to check on one thing before I go any further. If I go to manage and I go to project units, you see that I can check how it uh, lets me enter the metric units. And, and this varies country by country. So some countries use millimeters, some use centimeters, some use meters. I'm going to change it to meters and I'll say let's go with uh, showing three decimal places and I'll suppress any trailing, trailing zeros in the, the readout that I get. So if I say OK and OK, I'm ready to start drafting in my, my model. Um, one way of drafting is to pick the object that you want to draft on, which makes that plane active, and then you can go in and you can draft. So if I do escape, escape to get out of the command, you see that if I pick a, a reference plane, I could then pick a, a draw an object and draw on that plane. Um, what I'm going to suggest though is it's good practice to always watch when you're laying out the initial geometry for your mass model on the options bar what the settings are because this will let you be quite specific about where you're drafting. So you, you always want to check those settings before you draw something. Uh, the other thing that I want to show in here is that the uh, the reference planes and levels are are visible in the 3D view and it's very easy for me from the home tab to go in and draft extra levels in 3D. So if I drop that in to the mass model here I can select that level and I can go down and just say okay I want that to be 50 feet higher. Now if I click back down here level 1 should be active and I should be ready to draft on the really the, the level one plane. In a mass family these pl these levels are like horizontal planes that are useful to me. Don't think of them so much as as floors like you might in a project but just think of them as horizontal planes. So I'm now going to draft the shape that I want which is my box shape. Always good practice to check up here that, I'm, that you're drafting where you think you're drafting uh, using this options bar and making sure it says level one and I don't have it creating surfaces, I'm just drawing a sketch and I'm just going to drop it into this uh, corner here. Now if I look at my uh, reference planes in here, if I select a reference plane you see that it says that it defines the origin it's got a checkbox here and so does the uh, center left right reference plane. What this means is that my cursor is actually going to be attached at that intersection uh, the bottom left hand corner at the rear of the the mass model that I'm creating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the edges of the sketch and align them to those two planes. So by doing that and then locking it what I'm making sure is that once I've made this model that location there will be where the cursor is when I bring this mass model into a project. Next step is if I want to set a size for this, my box profile or sketch, I can click on, double click on a line and go in and enter the value. You see that I'm getting my meters with three decimal places, so I could go in and specify any value in here that I want. It, it really doesn't matter what I put in at the moment, I'm just showing you how the, the end adjusts to be the size that we tell it to be. That, however, wouldn't make a whole lot of sense when you bring the mass into a project. You don't want the user to have to open up the mass family to edit it. So what I want to do is I want to turn those dimensions into parameters. And I do that by drafting um, a dimension. And let, me, let me set it this way, kind of reviewing what I just did. If I pick on the level one, that makes that plane active. If I then select the dimension command, I can say I'm dimensioning between 
the reference plane and the end of my sketch and then I'm actually drawing and placing it onto the level one plane. So if I do the same in the other direction I've now got left and uh, so I've got the building depth and the building width defined by dimensions. I want to go a bit further and turn them into parameters so I'm going to pick on this dimension and up here I can say add parameter I'm going to say let's call this depth and I'm going to choose instance parameter. Instance parameter meaning that when I take this box shape for a building mass into a project I'll individually be able to change the value for the depth parameter in each instance of the mass that I've taken into the project. So they could all be different, they could all have a different value. I'm going to do the same thing for the width, so I'm picking on the other dimension saying add parameter, let's call this width, make it an instance parameter. And I'm now almost, I am ready to make the 3D form. The sequence is always the same. Create the line geometry with a closed sketch and potentially some additional lines, but remember the closed sketch. You then select the closed sketch so the lines aren't overlapping and there aren't any gaps. And then I go up to create form and I'm going to create a solid form for the building. And what it does is it extrudes it um, so there's now a, a volume that I can report on if I wanted to do things like apply mass floors and get square footage, uh, surface area of the exterior of the mass form or the volume of the form itself. You see that I can use the this handy uh, control to change the height but what I wanted to show you was that in using that control I can either uh, come in here and type in a value, say I said 50 feet, but again that's not me giving control to um, a user when they bring this into the project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this up until I see a green line, dashed line, that indicates that I've got the top surface level with the the layer, uh, the, sort of the level that I have in my mass model. And then if I check on the padlock, I've actually now linked between that level and the top of my building form. Okay, now the other thing I want to do in there is that I'm going to place a dimension in here so I can control the height of the building and um, I'll do this by specifying the first of all the plane that I'm planning on drafting on this plane here putting a dimension that runs between this level and that level so that there is actually can, I can place it any, any place I want but I'll place it to the side so you can see it. I've now got a dimension here I'm going to pick on that dimension and say let's add a parameter for that that I will call height, an instance parameter so that I can change it in my project. Now what I want to do is I want to be, uh, I want to test the relationships that I think I have in the model. And I'm going to turn it a little bit so you can see it. But what I want to do now is I'm going to come up here to the family types and where I've got these three parameters I should be able to go in and say what if the uh, width were 30 and then apply and I'm going to apply them one at a time so I can see what's going on. Well you see what happened was that I got the relationship that I wanted here but only the bottom adjusted and the reason that happened, let me cancel, is that when you did that extrusion there's actually a separate sketch or profile on the top from the one that's on the bottom. So if I went back to the bottom here, if I actually tab until I've selected the bottom surface and then click and say edit profile, that's the sketch on the bottom but the sketch on the top is different. Now what if I get out of editing mode here, what I can do is I can tab until I've got the bottom plane here 
and then I can use another option which is to lock those two profiles together so that a change to the one on the bottom will result in a change to the one on the top. If I lock them like that then I should get the behavior that I want from my mass model. So going back here and flexing the model again if I change the width to 50 that's the behavior that I expected to see. If I change the height to say 40 that's the behavior and if I change the depth to say 20 that's what I expected to see and I know that my model is working. And I usually check the parameters one at a time. Now I'm going to save this. So I'm going to say file save as the family and I'm going to call it um, let's, let's put it in my curved roof folder here and I'm going to call it uh, box building form or, or maybe a more accurate way would be to say box mass form because I could combine them to make a building or I could treat them as if they were each a separate building. So box mass form. 